iron wings cutting the air. For more than 100 years, lift, resistance, weight and traction have been mixed together to create the magic of flying. But actually, the only magical thing about flying are emotions, because all of an aircraft's characteristics are the result of the most accurate studies, project calculations and flying tests. In the course of this research, there is one element that is essential to verify the results of engineers' calculations and to understand how close they are to reality, the wind tunnel. In this tunnel, air flows on the surface of a scale model of the aircraft. Leonardo's aircraft division has two such tunnels, one at Venegano in Lombardy and the other near Turin. Roberto Pertile is the supervisor at the Venegano Tunnel. Ci troviamo nella sala controllo della Galleria del Vento di Leonardo. We're in Leonardo's wind tunnel at Venegano. And what we do here is the aerodynamic testing to determine the coefficients that will generate aerodynamic databases through which we develop simulation models and engineering models. What you see behind me is a 1 to 9 scale model of an M345. It's a classic installation that allows to do polars, that is, variations of aerodynamic coefficients in order to adjust them to the changing incidence and yaw. Basically, what happens here is that a scale model of the aircraft has to go through an airflow blowing at up to 250 km per hour. Special sensors gather all the data relative to the forces and momentums involved in the so-called polars. The test consists of a continuous incidence variation with a constant yaw. The model has a special internal scale to measure forces and momentums that, through a process of calibration, allows us to obtain the aerodynamic coefficients, that is, lift, resistance, lateral force, and the three momentums on the three main axes of the aircraft. The Venegano wind tunnel has an open test chamber, a special feature which allows for the maximum accessibility to the model and the equipment during the different phases of the test. In addition to that, on the ceiling there is a traversing mechanism, which permits three degrees of freedom, allowing the use of a probe holder system in the testing area to measure local flows or to simulate the release of extreme loads. At the far end of the probe holder, we can install several special instruments that allow us to test the characteristics of the flow field. Another very important piece of equipment is the rotating scale. It's a device with a three-spoke system and an axis aligned to the wind, which makes it possible to have the model rotate at variable speed, both clockwise and counterclockwise. This way we can obtain the dynamic stability derivatives while rotating, which are fundamental in order to predict the loop performance of the aircraft. Unlike the Venegono one, Turin's wind tunnel has a closed test chamber. Thanks to the walls delimitating its air circuit, this wind tunnel is particularly useful in order to test CMI models. Riccardo Gemma is a supervisor. Behind me you can see the control panel of the wind tunnel. And through these buttons you can turn on the tunnel's motor and adjust the testing speed. You can check in the monitor what happens to the model, to make sure there are no damages caused by the airflow. Once the test is finished, all the data are sent through a computerized system to a specific database where they will be analyzed and re-elaborated. This way we can study what would happen to the real-size model of the airplane. Also, before carrying out any modification of some importance of the aircraft, this change is test on a scale model in the wind tunnel. From wind tunnels, through a long series of tests, we get to the real aircraft. Leonardo's test pilots make sure that all modifications are in line with the engineer's anticipations. Pilots' feedback sometimes is decisive, especially during the development phase, to understand the behavior of the aircraft during a real flight and to be able to intervene to implement improvements. All flight parameters and the pilot's perceptions during the flight are recorded, and these data are transmitted to the engineering team, 
that will analyze them and decide whether new modifications on the aircraft are necessary or not. The Eurofighter Typhoon, the C-27 tactical transport aircraft, the ATR-72, the Am-346, as well as the new Am-345, the remote control aircrafts, are all examples of Leonardo's worldwide Made in Italy aeronautical excellence. Every aircraft before crossing the skies was just an idea, then a project and a scale model. Early ones were handmade of wood, one by one. Nowadays, new technologies and materials make it possible to build models that are extremely reliable in a much shorter time and at a much lower cost. In Venegono, there is even a small museum where one can see all the models that have been used up to the present day. In the past, scale models were generally made of metal, light alloy and true numeric control. But now things have changed thanks to rapid prototyping printers, 3D printers. We have a dedicated device for the purpose, allowing us to build a great number of components in a relatively short time, even very complex shapes, which would be very hard to manufacture in the traditional way. Behind me, you can see an example relative to the M346 aircraft. It's a 1 to 10 scale model, with a considerable number of components and entirely lined. Its aerodynamic parts are made with 3D printing. Measurement instruments have also seen a tremendous technological development. From the systems that used to measure forces on the aircraft through weights and counterweights, similar to a pharmacy scale, calibrating by hand the force of the air on the various parts of the aircraft, to the new systems based on strain gauging that allows us to obtain a huge number of measurements in a very short time and to store them immediately in an electronic format.